What's up mga kache? Kuya Dale here. I'd like to thank all of you who shared our channel in Facebook, especially to my family who encouraged me to make more videos. As of now, we have 79 subscribers in our channel. Rest assured, we will use your support to make more videos, lecture videos like the first one we uploaded. If you haven't watched it yet, the link is in the description below. Please like, share, and subscribe, and click the notification bell to be notified of our videos we upload every week. See you in the lecture! Welcome back, and let's get right into our lesson. So, our lesson uh, today is a, about um, dimensional analysis. So this is under your uh, chemical engineering calculations, which, which we will be encountered in second year. Uh, this will be encountered in second year. I think it's in your first semester. And if I can remember correctly, um, there there will be really many students who will, uh, that will not pass this subject the first uh, time around. So many of my classmates before have to take this subject twice. So I hope that you will pass this in your first try. And uh, I will not say that it's really an easy uh, course, but it's a bit challenging. So what I'm sharing uh, to you right now is a bit simpler side of the chemical engineering calculations. So uh, there are two. Uh, there are three. Uh, there are three parts of this uh, lesson, which is the systems of units, which I will be introducing to you, and then the conversion of units, especially from SI to English to American engineering units. So, and then the dimensional consistency. Okay. Uh, so let me open uh, start this uh, lesson with saying that take care of your units, and they will take care of you. So. Actually, uh, there, uh, there are a lot of um, errors in the past regarding units. So, for example, there was this uh, one pilot that uh, was mistaken. So the control tower, the control tower sent uh, sent a um, uh, the the altitude so that he, she, uh, that the pilot will follow. So he. Uh, he ordered the control tower operator and ordered the pilot in that airplane to uh, go to 1,500 meters. So 1,500 meters. But the pilot understood it as 1,500 feet because 1,500 feet is and or, or the feet was the uh, desired or the conventional unit that was agreed upon by the international aviation that will, they will be, they will report their uh, altitude so realizing that uh, so he put in the cockpit so, uh, 1500 feet so then he realized that he was so low and uh, he did not have a chance to bring the altitude of the plane back up so the plane crashed and that was a true story so yeah so the, the, the essence of the, the lesson of the story is take care of your units and they will take care of you. Just like uh, if you don't take care of your units, uh, they will kill you. Okay? So we, uh, I will introduce to you dimensions and units, although this is a very uh, simple, um, maybe you take it this for granted, but, uh, but if you're in chemical engineering, it is really a big deal in your uh, dimensions and units. So first, dimensions are general exp expression of, of a characteristic of measurement such as length, uh, time, uh, mass, um, temperature, and so on. And how you uh, record this, or how the unit of these uh, um, characteristics of measurements, we, we call them units. So they are the means of explicitly expressing the dimension such as feet or length. So for example, in our ruler here, you can see the unit centimeter. But uh, 
if you can notice one the rulers nowadays um they have exactly one foot of uh, length and then uh such as feet or something for length then for time uh it's uh hours or seconds uh, there are no other units of time that uh we have that we have So for mass or weight, we have kilograms or pounds, and then for uh, for uh, temperature, we have degrees Celsius, degrees Fahrenheit, Kelvin, and degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so we have those kinds of units. So there are two uh, types of units uh, used in chemical engineering. So first is the SI, or formally called the Least Chem International Unit. Yeah, and informally called SI, or more often, uh, redundantly, SI system. So the system there, uh, the S there stands for system, but still the people call them SI system of units. So here they are. So for, for the mass, we have our kilogram. And then for our length, we have our the meter. For time, we have second. For the amount of substance, we have the mole. For electric current, we have the ampere. For the thermodyna uh, thermodynamic temperature or the absolute temperature, we have Kelvin. And then for the luminous intensity, we have the candela. And we also have the combinations of these um, units. So if it is cubed, it becomes a volume, it is squared. Uh, and the length it is uh, squared, it becomes the area. And then if it, it, it is um, divided by the time, it becomes velocity, and if it is divided by time squared, we have the acceleration, and we all have these kinds of um, derived units from these basic SI units. Okay, so we have to familiarize these. Uh, we have to familiarize these if you are going to become a chemical engineer. So second, which um, gives a lot of headache to a lot of chemical engineers is the uh, American engineering system of units, the AE. But it is not to be confused with what is called the US conventional system or USCS or the English system of units. So here they are. So for the length, we have the foot. For the mass, we have the pound mass. So uh, we have the subscript M to signify that is uh, signifying the mass. And for our force, we also have the pound, but we have the subscript F to know, uh, denote that it's a pound force. So pound force and pound mass. For the time, the same for the SI, second, you know, coulomb for the electrical charge, degree runtime for the absolute temperature. And then for the luminous intensity, we have the candela. And then for the amount of substance, we have the mole. But um, um, most commonly, they put here LB mole, so pound mole, to signify that it came that amount of substance substance came from mole. Okay, when reporting uh, molecular weights, so you can uh, encounter that in your uh, lesson in the future. So. Now, sample problems for you to be energized or to, to pique your interest. So, I have uh, some questions here. So, which are the correct uh, SI symbols? And then, which are consistent, which is or are consistent with SI usage? Then, uh, the atmospheric temperature is about uh, 100 PA, 100 Pascal, 100 kilopascal. 10 megapascal or 1 gigapascal. For number four, we have the temperature degree is zero degrees Celsius is defined as uh, A, 173.15 Kelvin, a degree Kelvin. And uh, letter D is the absolute zero. Uh, letter C, uh, 173.15 Kelvin. And letter D, 
the freezing point of water. And lastly, which height and mass are those of a petite woman? So, magtanong-tanong na kayo sa mga friends niyo na petite. So, you understand what petite, right? Uh, what petite is, right? So, yeah. 1.5 meter. 1.5 meter, then 45 kilograms. And letter B, 2 meters and 95 kilograms. Uh, 1.5 meter and 75 kilograms. For letter D, 1.8 uh, meters and 60 kilograms. So, I'll give you 5, I'll give you uh, 10 seconds to answer. Right? Or pause this video for you to check the slides that I have presented to you before and then go back. Okay? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay? You're back. So let's uh, see the answers. So for number one, it is letter D. Okay? Then for number two, we have letter D also. For number three, so actually 100, uh, 100 Pascal is uh, way, way up in the atmosphere. And then for uh, letter C, it's way down below the uh, sea level because as the uh, depth increases, the pressure also uh, increases and both uh, Absolutely, most definitely, one gigapascal is uh, your crushed already. So the correct answer is uh, one hundred kilopascal because uh, it uh, for you for a person in sea level you have one atm, which is equal to uh, roughly equal to one hundred kilopascal. Okay, so you have to practice your um, conversion. So the temperature zero degrees Celsius is defined as letter C. Okay. So to convert uh, the temperature from uh, Celsius to Kelvin to Kelvin, so you have to add 273.15 to it. So you have two seventy three point fifteen. Plus the temperature in degrees Celsius. Why not degrees Kelvin? Because it is not the appropriate unit. The only unit is Kelvin, not degrees Kelvin. Okay? And natanong niyo ba yung friends niyo kung ilan uh, ganos la ka kangkad at ganos la kabika? So uh, I have a friend. So she really uh, she weighs, uh, she is 1.5 meters and uh, 45 kilograms. So it is uh, consistent with what we have observed in nature. <laughs> okay, so I have a practice problems for you, and you may answer it in the comments below, or you can PM me your answers and I will uh, validate them. Okay, so which, which of the following best represents the force needed to lift a heavy suitcase? So 25 newtons, uh, 25 kilonewtons, uh, 250 newtons, or 250 kilonewtons. Okay, so I have uh, J up there to um, for you to gauge how heavy it is. So next, so pick the correct answers. So a watt, a watt is. So it has the symbol of W. So uh, is it one joule per second? Uh, is it equal to one kilogram per uh, one kilogram times uh, one kilogram meter squared per second squared? Or are all of these units all, all types uh, unit for all types of power? Or all of the above? Or none of the above? Okay. And lastly, uh, is kilograms per second uh, basic or derived unit in SI? Okay, so go back to the uh, picture that I have um, showed you earlier for the answer this. Okay, so that ends our 
the first part of this lesson. So if you have any questions, you can find me at um, uh, my Facebook account. And then the reference book for this lesson uh, is uh, Himmel, Blau, and Briggs. So basic principles and calculations in chemical engineering. Okay, so uh, don't hesitate to contact me and I have uh, several um, several first year students that have contacted me through FB asking, uh, they asked me for help. So don't hesitate if I can answer your question, I will uh, most likely answer it. Okay, so bye-bye. See you for the next part of this lesson.